We compared the Jabra Elite 10 to the Sony WF-1000XM5, but you guys have questions, so many questions. Goedendag, we're DHRME. Dancing horses rarely make electronics. That's a fact. Now we've been testing the buds since the last video and we did say that the sound with the Sony WF-1000XM5, all things considered, was a tie. And we've been testing some more and there are some situations where I've now encountered I'm not necessarily completely in love with the Jabra Elite 10. Let me explain before you jump into the comment section. For the mid bass I prefer the Sony. The punch and the slam is so much more enjoyable but the sub bass still goes to the Jabra at least on the stock tunings. Jabra also does that smoothing of the higher frequencies that the Techniques AZ80 did which is the reason we didn't create it very highly for sound. Now it's not as bad as the Techniques AZ80 but I'd still say these are a tie for sound but Sony is still A more versatile as we said and B doesn't suffer from that smoothing effect in the treble. Another minor irritation I have for my OCD life is that my notification shade uh, Jabra gives you a little bit of a widget to switch between ANC which is all right but that widget gets stuck in the notification shade even after the buds are disconnected you have to actually tap into it and go to the app and then it goes hopefully it's a bug that gets resolved soon. And another thing we've noticed is if you set up the integrated Google Assistant then you will sacrifice the volume control. So long press will read out your notifications and you can no longer use it for volume. So you've got to choose. So what we did was turn off the integrated assistant, just use the onboard normal assistant to speak to, Google Assistant, Siri, whatever, and use the long press for volume, since volume is pretty important to us. And finally, we heard so many of you complaining in the comments about either buds failing or poor Jabra service. So just to be clear, we faced one issue in the past with the Jabra 75T Active, where one bud stopped working, but it got replaced by Jabra. So Jabra, if you're listening, Listen up. The Elite 8 Active versus the Elite 10. Well, the biggest difference, of course, is the shape of the tips. These are oval on the Elite 10 and round on the Elite 8 Active. And oval tips generally give you more comfort and less occlusion. And while we're on the tips, you also get four sizes of tips in the box of the Elite 10 versus three on the Elite 8 Active, which is kind of a strange choice by Jabra. And although the battery life on paper seems to be favoring the Elite 8 Active, we did get 12.5 hours on the Elite 10 and the 8 Active wasn't bad either though, 10 hours. So the five color variants on the Elite 10 outnumber the four on the Elite 8 Active. What else? Of course, the headlining feature, the Dolby head tracking support is present on the Elite 10 only because you have those sensors and accelerometers that's required to sense how your head is moving. The Elite 8 Active does not have that. I don't think this is something they will also include with a software update because you need little hardware to make it work. Now sound wise, the LE10 seem to have a wider extension on both sides, the treble and the bass than the 8 actives. This doesn't come across in all songs, but it really stood out to me when I was listening to Goat by Polyphia, especially the cymbals. It gives you a sense of wideness, the LE10. The brighter sound signature also throws off the timbre a wee bit though and the treble it does sometimes come across as not completely natural. On the other hand, there's also a bit more sub bass rumble on the Elite 10, but it's clear that these are tuned by the same company for the most part. In which situation would the Elite 8 Active make sense? Well, it comes with a stronger IP rating on the buds. It has IP68 versus only IP57 on the Elite 10. So if you need that more dust and water resistance, then this is gonna be your pick. Also, the case is IP rated as well on the 8 Active, IP54, whereas no IP rating on the case for the Elite 10. And continuing in the same theme, the 8 Active is also military standard 810H certified. And the buds are also coated so that it doesn't corrode because of sweat and the salt that's in it. And if you like money, because you can save yourself 50 bucks if you get the 8 Active. What is similar about these? Well, as opposed to what all the marketing says about the Elite 10 having better ANC than the 8 Active, from our testing and using our ears, we couldn't discern any kind of difference. Both are tier S for ANC and tier B for transparency. The calls are about the same too. Great in noisy conditions, but in windy conditions, not advisable. Again, same Fakman controls, the muting, auto muting, auto answering. All these features are part of the Jabra app and you get them with both these buds. And of course, final similarity is that both have this soft tech so you'd think that only the Active has it, but the Elite 10 has it as well. So what's gonna be our pick? The Elite 10. We're not as active as we may look in our videos. And besides, there was just too much occlusion and noise isolation in transparency mode that running with the 8 Active didn't really feel safe. 
We much prefer open ears for that sort of thing. But if you're into indoor workouts, then the 8 Active will be fine. Now, what about the AirPods Pro versus the Elite 10? Well, let's start with the calls again because Jabra has call controls dialed in beyond the basics. You have the Teams integration when muting, auto answer, auto mute. It's also ecosystem agnostic, and this is a theme that comes across in many buds these days. Multipoint works across devices. So if you have one iPhone, one Android, you can still use multipoint. You're not bound to an OS. The spatial audio and head tracking is also multi OS. So you can get the same kind of spatial audio on Android, whereas on AirPods, you have to have an Apple device. On the AirPods, you can only use Siri, whereas on the Jabra, you can use, you know, your assistant from Google, your Amazon Alexa, and you can use Siri as well. If you're going to use an iPhone, that's nice. Okay, here we see a pretty big difference in the IP rating. Again, IP57 on the Elite 10 and only IPX4 on the AirPods Pro Gen 2. So there's no dust resistance on the AirPods. On paper, both advertise a battery life of six hours with ANC on. But as you guys probably know, in our testing on the Elite 10, we got a whopping 12 and a half hours. So there's no competition here. And again, if you like money, save those 50 bucks. Now, it's not a secret that I'm kind of a fan of the AirPods Pro sound and much like the Sony WF-1000 XM5, there is something to say about these earbuds. And also, there is a lot of smarts that Apple employs, including the sound being different, different volumes, including measuring your ear canal in real time. You know, there's a lot of smarts that Apple applies to give you the most consistent sound experience. Having said that, the AirPods Pro do sound a bit darker and less expensive than the Jabra Elite 10. Again, both sound good, but at least for the short test I did, I prefer the Jabra, except for that mid scoop where voices and you know lead instruments recede a bit into the background, but I could EQ that out. Yeah, EQ, something you can't do on the AirPods Pro. The one area where the AirPods Pro 2 has always been killing it is in transparency. And here they're rated at tier S. That in combination with the amazing comfort that the AirPods Pro have, just make us forget we're wearing them. We'd say they're probably a bit more comfortable than the Jabra. Also, even though both are ranked for ANC and tier S, the AirPods Pro Gen 2 is slightly better within that same tier. And of course, there's that new adaptive ANC with all the smarts that come with it. And of course, the AirPods make sense if you're already in the ecosystem and you've got a lot of apples at home. There's that seamless switching you get, spatial audio, head tracking, the Find My Network, and Siri. But our craziest revelation was that the microphones do way better on calls when they're paired to an iPhone. Crazy, right? Although we are buttonophiles, the pressure sensitive stems in stroking on the AirPods Pro 2 is intuitive and also there's no pushing buds into your ears. Especially for volume control on a Jabra which requires a long press, Again, it's not so bad, but we prefer the AirPods Pro. I guess we are more strokeophiles than buttonophiles. Also, there's zero occlusion on the AirPods Pro where you can talk and you can still kind of feel like you're hearing yourself from outside. Even on the LE 10s with their oval shape, you do feel it a little bit. So what would be our pick? Well, if your lifestyle includes multiple types of operating systems, go for the Jabra. But you know what? Fanboy's gonna fanboy and buy Apple anyway. The Jabra Elite 7 Pro are low-key, very good earbuds that never get talked about. Much like Marvel, Jabra also had a few too many releases crowding their branding, even though their product naming is more sensible than most other companies. What are the similarities between these two? Well, the app, the control, the buttons, they all stay the same. Typical Jabra fare. The biggest difference between the 7 Pro and the 10 is in terms of, well, a few things, but let's start with the sound. There's much lower bass on the Elite 7 Pro. When you're sitting down, you know, in a quiet place, and if you don't like overdone bass, the Elite 7 Pro is actually a better option in many cases. But apparently people don't like that, and neither do we, I like bass. So Jabra's ended up going back to the bassier sound on the Elite 10. Now in terms of battery life, we got 6033 minutes on the Elite 7 Pro and that's on SBC, so that's a bit low. The fit also isn't oval, as you know, it's a round uh, ear tip. The Elite 10 is actually more a successor to the Elite 85T rather than the Elite 7 Pro. The 7 Pro, however, offers you a more secure fit. Oh, and the ANC is way better on the Elite 10. Tier S versus Tier C on the 7 Pro. Surprisingly, even though the levels are about the same on transparency, which is Tier B, we think the transparency is better on the Elite 7 Pro much sparklier in keeping with the overall sound. What we've also noticed on the 7 Pro is that the multipoint was buggy. Even though we disconnected a second device, it just kept reconnecting. 
and we've tried this a couple of times but it just went back and one time it even went back into phone mode which basically meant that when we tried to tap to play audio by pressing once on the button it would say mic muted which it would only do if it was on a call of course very weird and then the money question because there's a hundred bucks difference between the 7 pro and the elite 10 so again if you like money you know what to do our pick again we don't think this is an apples to apples comparison because these are both Jabra products and not Apple and B the shape of the tips is just different but other than the different tuning the Elite 10 is clearly the superior product here oh and C the Elite 7 Pro is going to be discontinued from Jabra's lineup what about the Galaxy well the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro versus the Elite 10 is an interesting comparison to begin with the A and C on the Jabra as we said it's tier S versus tier A on the Galaxy which is pretty good but it's not as good as the Jabra Again, then there's a buttons versus touch discussion and in recent times we've started enjoying the touch on the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro quite a lot because you also get volume controls which given everything are pretty reliable. Now dust resistance, Jabra's offer you IP57 so there is dust resistance built in but for liquids they're both basically the same because the Buds 2 Pro offers you IPX7 as well. So we tested the battery life on both of these Buds and we got 12 and a half hours on the Elite 10 and only 8 hours 45 on the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro, only. Of course, these are both very respectable numbers, but here clearly the Elite 10 is the winner. Then we much prefer the Jabra for phone calls in noisy conditions because Jabra suppresses background noise where Samsung just lets in everything. And that new setting on the Samsung for enhanced voice clarity didn't make that much of a difference to us. And if you're a fuckman, you get that mute control on the Jabra. Also, the Jabra is way more versatile across ecosystems because multipoint works, you get a variety of codecs. There's also no iOS Galaxy wearable app on iOS. So if you're on iOS, then the Jabra makes a lot more sense. What does the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro have going for it though? Well, it's much more compact, the case and the buds and the sound signature, it's something special. Well, Jabra is good, but to make them sound like the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro, I had to use this kind of EQ. So that's a good demonstration of how the sound is different. Uh, and of course, talking about EQ, no EQ on the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro, only EQ presets that Samsung offers you. And then of course, transparency, we really like the Galaxy Buds series uh, in general for their transparency capabilities. We would rate them as tier A, so you can really use them for transparency versus the Jabra, which is a tier B. So what's our pick for Samsung ecosystem dwellers and at the current price, the Buds 2 Pro are very attractive, but we feel equally comfortable recommending the Jabra. Okay, let's compare them to the Bose QC earbuds too. So why does the Elite 10 make more sense? Well, it comes with multipoint. Surprising, right? The Bose doesn't have it. Oh, and speaking of multipoint, if you need to connect to a new device, pairing is also easier on the Jabra. You just hold down both buds in your ear and it goes into pairing mode versus the Bose where you have to put the buds into the case and press that little button and you know, that thing. Oh, and speaking of buttons, you get buttons on the Jabra versus touch on the Bose. And we're buttonophiles, so we prefer the buttons. Also, the touch controls on the Bose do something weird. It amplifies the sound in your ear every time you tap. So it's not very comfortable. Then again, the IP ratings, Jabra is far superior in dust and water resistance at IP57 versus IPX4 on the Bose. And as a Fakman, you know, we used to think back in the day in 2019, 2018, when we were reviewing, you know, headphones that Bose was the Fakman thing. It had the best call controls and it had the best call quality. You know what? Not anymore. I think many other brands have surpassed Bose and the Jabra, I think, is better as a Fakman for many, many reasons, including call controls. For example, there's not even a mute for phone calls on the Bose, which is kind of annoying. And calls in noisy conditions are generally better. Bose pipes in those whooshing sounds from cars in the background, and it does feel like you're kind of in a, in a hollow chamber as against the Jabra sound. Oh, and there's a massive difference in battery life. In our testing, we got 12 and a half hours on the Elite 10 and only six hours on the Bose. So that's, yeah, it's a factor of two. And speaking of battery, there's also wireless charging support on the Jabra. You're only stuck to type C for the Bose. And if you like money again, there's a 50 bucks difference here. Now the Bose QC2 does stand out for a couple of things. The ANC, I mean, it's the best ANC we've tested on earbuds, even within tier S. I mean, if you're really gonna nitpick, Bose, is, it still stands apart. There's a silence it envelops you in, so it's really, really powerful with its noise canceling. 
and uh, we also like the hearing protection when it's on transparency so if it detects a loud sound just like the airpods pro 2 it immediately kills that loud sound to protect your hearing in terms of the fit so bose does have wing tips and in many cases or some cases at least you will get a slightly more secure fit on the bose if you move around but you know wingtips an additional thing you have to test and see if it works a lot of folks also love the bose sound their tech of analyzing ear canals in real time is also pretty awesome much like the airpods pro 2. our pick here the jabra elite 10. talking about the jabra elite active 75t versus the jabra elite 10 First off, I don't think we would recommend that people buy the Elite Active 75T now because they're very old at this point and there's a lot of tech in them that's kind of outdated. For example, they have a primary secondary architecture where one of the buds does all the heavy lifting connecting to the phone and the other bud connects to that, which means the battery depletion is kind of not standard and also it leads to weird things where you can't use just one bud on its own, you have to use only the right one. So it's not something we generally recommend unless you're getting a great price, but if you do own it already, Man, the 75T Active still stands up in terms of sound. The bass is still, you know, if you love that bass, you're probably not gonna get the exact thing from the Elite 10. You can get very close, at least at the stock tuning. But talking about sound, on the whole, we prefer the Elite 10. What I noticed was the treble and the higher frequencies are a bit more accentuated. And maybe it's because I'm aging, my uh, ears kind of prefer that slightly brighter sound. But Man, the Elite Active 75T still stands up to this day for sound. I know what Jabra said. When they departed from that formula and went to the 7 series, apparently the people didn't like it much because Jabra was known for those buds. And they're making a comeback to that with the 8 Active and the 10. Which one would we buy? Well, Active 75T, if you're getting them A, if you're getting them new, they'll be newly manufactured, not sitting on the shelves forever. And B, if you're getting them for a very good price, Maybe if you're already using them and you're upgrading just for sound, I would not do that. But for many other reasons, the Elite 10 is still the clear pick. We chose to talk about these buds because you guys had questions about them and not because someone paid us to. Keep engaging with us and asking the critical questions and consider becoming a patron or YouTube member so that we can continue to make more and better content for you guys. Thank you once again. You've been questioning the Elite. And we've been DHRME. Namaste. Namaste. Ha ha ha!